Right, welcome to another video on Dave's Garage and today's video make a surround for our gear stick so our gear stick turret I think we call it um, fairly straightforward just made from uh, a couple of bits of metal welded together and rounded off to uh, look like it's sort of pressed um, biggest challenge was making the little lip around there because there's a there's a, a, a gear a gator that goes over it a, a, a boot and it's sort of got a, a shape inside that sort of needs a that shape to go over but you'll see in the video what that means hope you enjoy it hope you learn something from it I, I learned a couple of little tricks from it um, about rounding over the edges to, so it looks like a nice finish and, and you'll see on this video as well I've gone back to my CO2 gas and normal MIG welder um, I was getting on okay with the gasless, but the only thing I didn't like about it was it's a messy weld. There's a lot of um, dust and smoke off of it. So outside is fine, but inside of the garage, as I was finding it making my chest feel a bit funny. So probably probably a good idea to, to stop that. So hope you enjoy the video and see you at the end. Righto, so this is what I'm talking about. So we need to make a turret to go around this. I've ordered from... Motor sport tools, I think I had this from. So it's the a rubber boot for the gear stick. So all I need to do is measure the inside of that and have a go at making put that down. Have a go at making like a ring that, that clamps that sort of slots around. I try and put a picture up of what I mean. You can buy them, but it's not quite what I want, so I'm gonna have a go at making my own. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is get a measurement of the circle diameter in there we're going to need and we use these probably the engineers out there cringing for a start at the state of them because they're quite rotted they're quite rusty and don't really, haven't really looked after these very well and the way i'm going to use them is probably all wrong as well but it, it works for me so if i squeeze those together and just as i'm touching the insides of there that's going to give me the diameter i'm looking for if i measure that with me calipers we're looking at 92, 93 millimetres. Let's go with 93 because it's easy to remember. Yeah, that'll do us. That's a nice snug fit in there. And let's see what we can do with that. So we grabbed a bit of steel and just given it a basic clean up. Get the worst of the rot off of it. It was only just a bit of surface rust. If we Find the centre of that ish. This is probably just going to be a practice run to begin with. Give that a gentle pop. So if we go forty six point five. Ah, oh, easy to use that. We can use this look. That should give us ninety-three. Okay. So it's no good to me just cutting that out because we want this to be turned up and out to grab hold of this section here. So we want an up upturn. So we want to be coming in. Let's have a look. So if we come in 10 mil, and cut that circle out, then see if we can tip tip that flange up to a straight up at least, and then start tipping it out so it can be used to grab hold of this so let's give that a whirl smack a hole there so 
hopefully you can see that. Now we can start jigsawing very carefully that centre hole out. Okay, so now we want is something to tip this up with. Right, well we can give the spanner a go and then see how we get on. Hopefully we'll be in camera shot, you know. Yeah, that should work, okay. Okie doke. Let's start spannering. The trick of this is not to get too greedy on each pull, just a little bit, it's quite time consuming, but it's, you can see what's possible with very, very simple tools, no need to be making presses or forming dies, a little bit of patience, goes a long way. You see it's starting to go out of shape now, but what I'm hoping, and I'm planning on once it gets up to upright I can start because obviously you're stretching this out now as we go in but as it gets up to upright you can start using a hammer and dolly to bring it up and that'll stretch it back out again Right, I don't think we're far from using the hammer and dolly now. Put my dolly on the bench. I'll try and do now using the, the face of that is kind of rounded, so we should be able to tap that up upright at least. Let's give it a go. At the same time, this should be stretching the metal out. Try a little bit further with the uh, with this, I think. Slowly, slowly. Leverage. All right, let's see how we do it. Oh, 
we're on the right tracks at least so what we want to do now is have these splaying out so it actually grabs hold of this what's the best way of doing that then I wonder Bum, 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 bum. It's just a case of tapping a mover. Let's just try and see what happens. Here we go in, starting to get some shape here now look, you can see that, it's starting to splay over. All else fails, just whack it with a hammer and it'll come to shape. Right, it'd be nice to find something to bend that around now to neaten it up. Something like that. To drill a bit will do us. Small a little bit. Okay, before we do that, let's try it for size. Oh, I think we're there. As it happens, we get too carried away with it. There we go. Marvellous. Right, okay, that gives us a basis for that. Maybe a little, little bit tighter. Just a tad tighter. Okay, that was a six mil drill bit. We'll go for a five mil and see if we can tap it down around this now. Yes, that's taken a fair bit of tuggy there now to, so that's, that's going to cope with the gear, gear shift moving. Lovely. Right, that gives us the basis for the top of our turret. Happy days. So hopefully you can see now the shape that's taken. A little bit of twist in that, but in reality I'm only going to be using sort of that much of it because I'll, I'll cut the top out, then weld up to it to suit what I want. Right, that sort of gives us an idea of how much we've got to build up. So it's not horrendous, we can certainly do something with that. Messing around with bits of card and stuff, this is kind of the shape I've settled on. So rounded here, then sort of narrowed off to a rounded top, which if you can see on there, hopefully, I've sort of marked out on there the shape. So the idea is to cut that shape out and then tank the edges over so there's a sort of a half half turn on them so when I then weld the bottom up to it with the tank on it as well it'll have a nice rounded edge very roughly that's kind of the idea so we've got this top piece cut out of shape now and the idea is to round off these tops all the way around and when I make a, a piece to go around there as well which I may make a bit smaller so this sort of fits 
in there somewhere. And then that'll give us plenty of waggle room there. And with the edges rounded over, that should look a bit neater. And to round it over, I'm simply going to use the head of this big old bull peen hammer and mark basically where I want the rounding to start. And start tapping away. Again, it's about not being too greedy, just a little bit at a time. What I really need to get is a tanking die for my uh, bead roller. Now you can see how it's starting to roll over around the edge. And once that's rolled over, another piece of metal rolled over like that. And you can sort of get the idea, hopefully, hold this better towards the camera, of once those edges are welded over, you can get a nice rounded finish. So you can see, these straightening up of course, but you can see you're starting to get that rounded edge on it. Now to tidy it up and make it a bit smoother, I'm going to use the back end of this old tank to do that with. Lovely. Right, so I've uh, very roughly cut out a shape. I'll clean that up before I go any further. Roughly cut out a bit of cardboard, uh, steel to the shape of our cardboard, <clears throat> and that then is the piece which will effectively wrap around there, like so. So I'll get that cleaned up and shaped up, and then we'll. Uh, Start beveling the top of it to suit. Okie dokie. That's how to clean as well. Right, now we've got a nice clean piece of metal. We can start shaping it. Let's find something to shape it around. I'll do us. A million miles away of what we're aiming for. <clears throat> of course, we'll uh, chew this up better once we're onto the car. Right, the next challenge is to put a, a curve around the top there like we've done with that. So when the two meet up, we'll have, hopefully, a nice radius. Hopefully with a, a ball hard there hammer on there, we can work our way over there as we go around. Same again, we'll make a mark on it so we got an idea where we're going. That's grown a bit. Just a guide. Well, hopefully you'll see now what we're aiming at is 
try and get a side on view of this as best I can. Obviously needs a bit of refining yet, but once that's unwelded across there, you'll have a rounded edge. Then I should have made this a bit longer. Yeah, oh, should be right. But I'll do it when I start to weld it. I'll start, you see, I'll start from the, the front end here and work my way around to the back end. Or what will be the front end rather. And in hindsight, I probably should have made these a bit longer, but I can always little, drop a little slit, slot in there if I have to. Right, okay, let's keep going. This will eventually be covered in carpet anyway, so I'm not worried about it being super perfect. You can get a bit too, uh, too anal with these things and spend a load of time making something perfect and then cover it up. Yes, I think we're there. I think. Yes. Okay. It's time to start tacking this together. Right then. I am set back up with gas welding for this because I'm gasless is fine outside, but I'm finding it a bit dirty weld. So we'll start tacking this together and see how we get on. It's a cleaner weld than the, uh, the gasless. The gasless has its place, but uh, I'm back on the gas welding until I run out of seal, that is. <laughs> yes, we are going to end up a little short over here, but that's, uh, yeah, we'll worry about that later. Right, that'll do us nicely for a minute. You can see now what we're aiming at here. So what I think I'll do is get the hammer back in the vise and can finish off these rounds now that we've got it together and we can tie these up so a bit, bit neater. We are a bit short on the back end there, so that's a bit of a, a fail. But uh, that's no worries, we can soon put a strip in there. But, uh, I think the next thing we do before we get too carried away is size it up in the car and make sure it's it's okay. Yeah, that's the idea. By the time we scribe this properly into place, it'll fit down nicely there and there and sort of blend in nicely with the with the tunnel, hopefully. So that's not looking too shabby. By the time we got our rubri on there like that, we'll be looking half about. Put the hammer back in there, we can now go around tidying up in between the spot welds. There we are. That's looking a bit neater. Let's sort that out as we get around there. We're nice and straight on the sides. Going straight down, so that's what we're after. So what I'll do now, I'll fully weld that up and then show you what that looks like. All right, there we have it, all welded up. A little bit welded in the end there as well, so that's not come out too bad. And if I flip it round, you can see on the inside, plenty of 
nice penetration there so there's no uh, we can got plenty of weld there to grind back and that will come up nicely so I'm going to grind that back now to a nice rounded edge and see what we come up with then we can start blending it into the car right oh a bit of grindering that doesn't look half bad so that's a nice uh, radius on that that's what I was after so the next job is to start scribing it into the car so scribe it around the for the car washer pen round like that and uh away to go that's how you get your scribe line a bit difficult here i have to sort of guess that a bit there because it's i've got nothing to hold against but we'll cut that off first and then see what we got that's a bit closer fitting now so what i think i'll do now is draw around this and then trim away what's there. Got a little bit of a gap here, but we've got a bit of metal there. Might be able to turn up the spanner to, to, to meet up to that. Let's see what it looks like after I've drawn around it. Right, so there's my pen line. Try to keep this as tight as a scribe as I possibly can. And I think what I'll do there, because we need a bit of a space there, is get, a, get my little spanner in there and just turn that up a little bit. And then we can cut this away perhaps and then just weld it directly onto the onto the gearbox tunnel. I was thinking of making a flange and perhaps making it removable. I'm still pondering that idea for a minute. So with a, with a flange on it, it sort of fit around there and then screwed to the gearbox tunnel. To make it removable so i'm in two minds about that so whether do i weld it directly to it or do i build a flange all right a couple more trims and we're getting there that's a nice snug fit now and same around there a much snugger fit and it's looking a bit neater being a bit closer to the floor and this is this is fitting in nicer as well now so i think we're there it's just the other question, do I make a flange or do I weld it directly to the, 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 the tunnel? The problem if I weld it directly to the tunnel, I've got the under seal on here now, which I showed by the Gravitex. That's going to try and catch fire. Um, it's not the end of the world, I can clean that off and re reapply that. Or do I make a flange and screw it on, which then I can make it removable for future pulling the gearbox in and out, would that be easier or, or is it really going to matter? I need to ponder that. I might even sleep on it. Right, I come up with a game plan, which is tack it into position for now. And when I tear the car down for the uh, final build, then I'll fully weld it. So that's it basically in place. I'll chuck the rubber on it now. And so you can see how that looks. There we go. Lovely jumpy. So, all I'll do eventually with that, whether I'm going to have some sort of centre console in the car or not yet, I don't know. Possibly I will. And then some sort of further gator over that. So that's just the first gator to keep the road noise and the heat and the fumes and nonsense out of the cabin. So, quite happy with that. I think that's uh, not come out too bad. It's kind of what I had in my head that I wanted. I say once the car's torn back down again, I can then fully weld that. I, got, I, got, I suspect I'll have a few of those jobs to do. But that's future Dave's problem. While well, I've got the welder out, I've got the bumper brackets welded into place. And again, a special thank you to Russell Lord and um, one or two others who have mentioned it as well. They've given me sizes for the centres of that. But Russell went above and beyond and actually put me a video together, which I'll include on this as well. So from centre line there, from where your bracket will go, it's there. So you can term it as 33 and a quarter inches or 84.4 in millimetre terms. Right, further to the previous video on fitting the radiator, may have a solution to the top hose problem. 
This is a hose from a MX5, the one I got, my Mark 1, which I changed out because they were getting a bit old, so I've just used it for uh, mocking up purposes. And that would fit very nicely around there, lots of space around there, and just re resize where that's got to go. So I'll move the flange around a little bit. So I think that might be a solution to that problem. And one or two have mentioned that it's going to have an elbow on there to allow for movement on the pipe rather than a straight pipe. So I think that may be the way forward. Right, you. I think that solved that conundrum. So that's now fitted nicely in there. The, um, I put a bit of Halford's finest on that as well now, so I'm not going to put the rubber boot on that until that's hardened off nicely. But uh, I'm quite pleased with how that's come out. Like I said, I'll fully weld that once I've got the car broken down again. So thanks again for watching, thanks for subscribing, uh, special thanks to Russell Lord again and the one or two others that mentioned the, the distances for my um, uh, rear bumper brackets, that's a huge help, you, you're sort of poking in the wind just like that, guessing otherwise, so I really appreciate all, all the help that comes in that way. And it looks like we've got a solution for our top rubber hose for the radiator as well, so that's a bit of uh, rejig in there. But Hey ho, that's the nature of the beast. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being a subscriber. Thanks for all your comments. Very encouraging. It does give me the impetus to get on with these projects. It's um, it's sometimes I'm, I'm full of <laughs> full of the joys of spring to get on with it, and sometimes like, oh. but right either way, I'm, I'm out here and I'm working on it, and it's moving forward a little bit, little by little bit, by little bit. So all good.